Blackstone struck a roughly $10 billion deal for another apartment landlord in the latest sign that the real estate investor sees a right moment to pour money into the property market. And Bloomberg's Patrick Clark and Abigail Doolittle join me to discuss exactly what's going on in the world of Blackstone and real estate. If you think about how the last year has gone and their propensity to now put money to work, how do you put this into context, Patrick, about what we've seen in the last year or so? And are things really now changing? Yeah, well, I, uh, they're changing because Blackstone is changing its behavior. And, and when Blackstone starts buying, the whole real estate market takes note. I think that's for certain. Um, you know, you just heard John Gray say it. If you wait too long, you might miss the buying opportunity. And that once interest rates start coming down, there is going to be, or everyone expects there will be, a huge rush uh, to deploy capital. And once that's happening, prices are going to get you know, kind of lifted up by that, and Blackstone wants to be ahead of that. You certainly see the stock move today when you look at Ayer's own REIT moving up more than 20% higher. But Abigail, I'm kind of interesting on how this is lifting more boats. Yeah, it's interesting because we have a lot of other multifamily REITs that are higher, but it's not just multifamily REITs, it's REITs across the board. Because I think one of the big questions is, and to your point, Patrick and Shanali, in terms of Blackstone and John Gray earlier saying that they're getting into real estate, this is very well telegraphed, and they're not alone. As we know, KKR, Heinz, a lot of the other big players in this space, uh, you know, have been talking about about the idea of raising money for the opportunity that's ahead. Office the most beat up, today up more than 2%. So I think that the question is, is this space in play? I think that the really big question here is whether or not this deal will mark the bottom because it is such a big deal. It's their biggest deal, I believe, buying a REIT ever. Uh, and so very well telegraphed, lots of headlines. It's not so often we're talking about REITs uh, on television. So I think that that's one question. Will this mark the, will mark the bottom? Is it going to loosen things up? You know, it's I'm curious because you talked about office and even that getting a bid today. And I'm curious about sectors here, particularly in rental properties alone. How do you describe what's going on with air and what it means in terms of the money black zones willing to put to work when you come to rental properties? One of the things I thought was interesting about air is that it's focused in kind of high end rental markets. I mean, it's not just that their renter is a relatively affluent renter, which it is. I think average household income is like $237,000 in this portfolio, but it's Miami, it's LA, it's Boston, Philadelphia. It's not what you think of as the sun, uh, sun Belt boom markets. Like, right, that they're mostly invested well, in. Well, but you know, Phoenix, Dallas, Atlanta, those places got a lot of new development over the last few years, and it's certainly leading to softer rents in those places. I'm not saying Blackstone would shy away from those markets, Tricon Residential, which it uh, agreed to buy a few months ago. That, that is a Sun Belt play. Yeah, that is really interesting because there is so much supply in those areas. What's also interesting is that this company went public back in December of 2020. It's a spin out from IMCO. That sister company is the development arm. It is still public. It's the apartment investment company, a REIT, up 5.5% today. So I think that this is really, you know, for the most part in terms of like when we think about commercial real estate, multifamily, a little bit mixed. Um, but this is probably giving sub signals that some of these other markets, they're also here uh, in New York. I was on their website. They have a lot of little buildings. I lived in a building on 76 street a few years ago that it turned out it was owned by one of these ma you know massive private equity companies so just interesting that this is uh, in the news opening things up pretty fascinating air was down more than 37 percent in 2022 barely up to one percent the year after how much is blackstone now putting a floor to the industry really being a saving grace do you think more REITs are going to get more love now that people know that buyers are more willing to get in Sure. I mean, look, Blackstone is the takeout for everyone at the end of the day. It's at the top of the <laughs> food pyramid. So if you're going to aggregate assets, you know, you're hoping that someone like Blackstone is going to buy them from you one day. But, you know, it's funny. Abby was just talking about other players that are in the space. What else do we know about just how much money those folks are willing to put to Well, work? I've heard many reports of uh, different companies raising money, having the dry powder on the sidelines. And it's interesting because you're speaking about a floor. We've all been waiting for this crash in commercial real estate. Uh, but it hasn't come in part because there is so much money. So it does create like a bidding floor to some degree. If you did buy um, air apartment or apartment income, uh, the REIT back in 2020, you'd be up about 23%. So even though it was down last year, uh, you know, some real life brought back into the space. And Heinz down in Texas, they actually just launched a private wealth uh, uh, vehicle. And in part because of exactly this, they also think the bottom is ahead in a couple of years and they want to be in now and give that opportunity to small retail investors.